Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the Access of uh, nightly wrap up show. Hope everybody is uh, doing well. Hope everybody had a great uh, weekend. If you are uh, brand new to us again, thank you very much for tuning in, uh, spending a few minutes of your time, and hopefully, I will continue to provide uh, unbiased opinion of the trading world. So, hopefully, everybody's doing well. The only thing I ask is if you could just take a second. Uh, like the channel, subscribe, like the video, help us out. And hopefully, again, I can continue uh, put it pointing you in the right direction. So after last week's uh, phenom phenomenal trading week, uh, 6% gain on the NASDAQ, 4% gain on the S&P. Logically, today was going to be the continuation of gangbusters. Everything was going to go nuts. Not so much. Not so much. Again, this is why we always talk about prepare for the next day. Uh, we don't know how aggressive, how passive, um, how committed buyers and sellers are on an individual session. The only thing we could plan for is our 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 uh, our game plan, right? Uh, our pivots in this uh, in this uh, demeanor. So it's very very important to kind of always come in with your game plan. If it confirms, great. If not, uh, the next day is the next day. And what we saw today, um, this is I basically didn't trade today. <laughs> Uh, it's very rare that I say that. I, I basically didn't trade today. This is the, the least amount of activity um, I had uh, in 2024. Okay. Um, the good news is the market actually did some structural things um, that that we can honestly benefit uh, for the rest of the week. But you can clearly see that we had a really big move, a uh, big big move last week. Uh, this morning, uh, you had a pretty, you know, pretty. Disgusting downgrade on Apple, you know, iPhone sales potentially slowing, blah, blah, blah. You know, Apple got really, really hit. And you figure, you know, if this was, you know, two weeks ago, three weeks ago, we were underneath the 50 day moving average. Uh, you, you figure with Apple being down uh, six, seven points at one point, NASDAQ would be down like 250, 300 points. Not so much. This is where you really see uh, how sentiment is structured right now. Instead, uh, yeah, NASDAQ was down, what, 91 points, but it wasn't anywhere near. Uh, where this thing could have been, especially if we were uh, in this same scenario two weeks ago. So you had uh, Apple got uh, downgraded in the morning. Uh, you had some weakness pretty much everywhere. And this was pretty much what I call a one candle day, which basically means if you look at the queues at the open, right? They just got flushed out at the open. Uh, and the reason why this level held here, this was just a, a retest, right? This was just a retest back to the 50-day moving average they reclaimed two days ago. So structurally, that was great. Uh, for the next four hours, the market did absolutely nothing. Literally did absolutely nothing. Um, you know, I just sat there, sat there. I personally have a window from 9.30 to around 12, 12.30, 1 o'clock. That's like my four-hour window. Uh, that is where people chase stocks. That's where the exaggerated candles, expansion channels are, are played out. In the afternoon, things kind of shrink and again, I, I have no value for most days, unless I'm taking something overnight. Um, I really have no value in the afternoon. And the market pretty much played out that way. We kind of went sideways from that uh, that first sell-off. Uh, we kind of grinded up a little bit, reclaimed the 50-day moving average. But most names weren't able to get above the previous day's channel, for the exception of a couple. And we'll get to them uh, in a second, but if you look at the final tally, Dow up 228 points, S&P up seven, uh, NASDAQ considering the Apple down rate only uh, down 91 points. And you know the, the, the continuation of this formation, this is kind of what we continue to talk about. We don't need to be uh, up every single day after we reclaim back the 50-day moving average. But the key here is as long as we keep on holding, right? That 470, 471, and I believe we talked about it on the weekend video. Again, risk is still on. Uh, now, individual names could be a whole different story, and we'll kind of go through these names uh, one by one. But ultimately, uh, what we saw today in the market is sellers being comfortable. They try to uh, they try to get back the 50-day moving average on the bear case. They couldn't do it. 
Uh, and all today was a really good digestion day. My ass is a lot flatter today because I was just sitting there pretty much all day. Uh, but this was definitely a structural day. And I think uh, the value, and that's the key every single day. I look for value. I couldn't care less if the market's open. I look for value. If I'm not getting that value, I don't care if it's one trade, three trades, or no trades, right? If, if I'm not seeing that value, I'm going to leave the market alone. Because again, I don't trade because the market is open. I trade because I have value. And today, I found pretty much the sl smallest amount of value uh, for the, the entire, for the absolute entire whole year of 2024. The problem is my favorite chart coming into today's session started going after two o'clock. Uh, and usually I try to log off around two o'clock, 2.30, go to the gym, clear my head, go swimming while the weather is still nice. And, you know, I kind of missed it. Well, not necessarily even missed it. There was just no liquidity on it. Uh, and we'll get to meta uh, in a second. But other than that, um, I, I think nothing materialistically has changed from um, the weekend's view of the market versus how we uh, played out today. Uh, did some names feel the effects today? Yeah, I think they did. But overall, I think the spectrum of the market continues uh, to be healthy, right? Healthy bulls and bears are very comfortable at levels. Bulls defended the 50-day moving average, bounced strongly from there. And now a lot of our setups that we had coming in for today uh, are going to be valid again for tomorrow. So let's talk about some individual names. Uh, we'll run through the NASDAQ one. You know, We'll run through the, some NASDAQ names. I'll give you some names uh, for tomorrow to watch. Let's start off with Tesla, right? We talked about on the weekend video, just something's wrong with this thing. This thing, he, despite putting in uh, four days in a row of higher highs and higher lows. It just it just cannot progress. It just it just cannot progress. Again, another violent seller today in the crowd. You can see it right from the word go. You got a big nasty violent seller. Uh, this this wick here is right. You had a big nasty seller here uh, at the open, and they just continue to punch this thing going sideways. We want to pay attention to Tesla today because look where it stopped, right? It stopped today at the 50-day moving average. We want to pay attention. Obviously, I still want to give the bulls the benefit of the doubt on the stock, but I want to pay attention to the 50-day. Today, it bounced off the 50-day perfectly, but my question is, well, what happens if it loses, right? What happens if it loses the 50-day in the next couple of days, knowing that there's a massive seller in the crowd? And I definitely want to pay attention to that. NVIDIA, right? So NVIDIA, you know, last week had a phenomenal run. Okay, you want to definitely one of the strongest names I was trading last week on dips into strength and this, that, and the third. But today, as you can see here, today it lost the 50-day moving average on the close and actually had move uh, all the way down to the 64 EMA before bouncing a little bit. Here's one I want to watch, right? Here's what, what one I want to watch both sides uh, going, into, uh, going into tomorrow's session. If the bull case... If we could get back above the 20-day supply tomorrow, then yes, the video should wake up. We still started seeing 20, 25, and 30, uh, 130 short-term expiration contracts hit the tape. But at the same time, if it starts building up and starts confirming today's price action, you know, we could go down to 12, 11. So uh, definitely we want to watch that. Uh, Apple, again, uh, a nasty downgrade today, a nasty downgrade, and it lost uh, last week's lows, kind of starting to... You know, close below the, this this uh, this uh, 65 day EMA. Uh, obviously, I'd like to watch the bottom channel here in the next couple of days. I don't think it's going to get there tomorrow, uh, but I want to watch the bottom channel here. I, I think this is a stalemate on the on the chart. I really don't expect the stock uh, to do anything meaningful in the next in the next couple of days, uh, for the exception of kind of digesting uh, today's selling. Uh, Amazon uh, had a beautiful run. Beautiful, beautiful run last week. Again, it's kind of mirroring the NASDAQ 100. Uh, kind of, you know, back tested today, some profit taken, held the five day moving average. Nothing really there uh, to talk about. Um, but names that we talked about last week, uh, uh, you know, last week that did well, continue to do well. Uh, Microsoft broke out. This was definitely a beautiful trade I had uh, from Thursday into, into Friday. Uh, you know, beautiful move, just a beautiful move. It's still uh, progressing on this 50 day reclaim going higher. Again, should be. Uh, should be deemed bullish, especially if we start rallying again tomorrow. Um, Meta, you guys remember Meta uh, over the weekend, right? We talked about Meta over the weekend, about taking out this whole range from August. It, I, unfortunately, I was already so tired. I was already so wiped out. I was like, yo, I just, let's watch the Meta for tomorrow. For all you guys who bought uh, the 528, uh, 528 pivot, great job. This is the highest close now in the whole formation. Uh, we saw today 530, 535, and 540 weeklies. 
uh, come in on Meta. Unfortunately, I didn't participate in the afternoon trade. With all you guys who got it, you're about five points. Great job. And if the market continues tomorrow, which you know looks like the bulls, I just had a res day today. Uh, you know, you could see a, a push to five forty. Uh, so that looks uh, continues to look good as well. The one name that's very, very interesting going into tomorrow is Google. A lot of people are going to look at the chart and go, oh, well, no, I don't see it, right? What's what's there? You got a good point, right? You got, you got a very fair point. And normally when the market is really good, I'm not going to look at Google, especially off this bottom formation. But here's kind of the deal. If you guys notice, the last couple of days has been rejected off the 20-day moving average, right? You see this uh, olive line, right? It's been rejected back-to-back days off the 20-day moving average. I want to watch them kind of reclaim that area. And the reason why is, number one, when the NASDAQ got pulled today, Google didn't go down. That's number one. But here is where, where, you, where it comes in to be a very, very interesting potential for, the, for this week. Again, this doesn't necessarily have to happen for tomorrow. We saw tons, tons of repeat buyers of the 160 weeklies and the 16250 weeklies with some decent size. Usually, you're not going to see... You know, usually you're not going to see three, four dollar move, three, four dollar bets on Google. It's not Tesla, it's not Nvidia, it's not Meta, it's Google, right? It's Google. But since they are betting and the stock didn't come in today at any time as the market kind of uh, reset itself from last week's six uh, six percent gain, I want to watch this thing because again, it's a very, very intriguing theory that whatever doesn't go down must go right. Especially you have the option flow, short term expiration. So I definitely want to keep an eye. On Google uh, for uh, tomorrow, that you know that looks uh, really really good. Uh, let me give you guys a couple of other names uh, that I am definitely watching for tomorrow. And again, I just want to put to, I want to put today's uh, you know day in just to, just a bet. It just did nothing today. It was just such a waste of a day. I could have taken the day off. But again, we we don't dictate value. We have a game plan. If it if our game plan doesn't play out. Uh, or confirm nothing you can do about it. Again, there's always a premium hand uh, down the road. You don't need to trade every single day. So let me give you guys uh, some ideas. Again, I'm definitely watching Google if they can reclaim back uh, the 20-day moving average. Meta, now that it broke out above this channel, either watching tomorrow into dips into the 60-minute support uh, or above today's channel, we definitely like that as well. Uh, AFRM uh, had a little bit of a PR with Apple Pay this afternoon um basically they're, they're going to let out apple users uh you know pay later feature it's been rejected twice now at the top of the range here keep an eye on this thing for tomorrow if they start building above the top of the range and finally reclaim it could push it into this 47 area so keep an eye on that uh asts is a name uh you know had a big big run Pulled in, like we talked about in the weekend video, it had an inside day today, got stuffed at supply on Friday. Guys, watch this ASTS in the next couple of days. If it can reclaim back uh, this 20-day supply, maybe this thing uh, wakes up. Uh, Carvana had a big day today, right? Really big day today. Had a really strong move, came out of this range here. Keep an eye on Carvana. You know, had a, had a, you know, was up $11 today. Again, very, very big move. Uh, watch Carvana if it starts building above and so it's confirming today's channel tomorrow. That looks good. Uh, CRM looks interesting. It's coming off the bottom here. As you can see here, it's been rejected once, twice, three times off the supply. Watch this thing. This thing could just get above the supply. Then you have some pretty decent airspace coming down the road. And last but not least, uh, LSCC. I'm assuming, is this the lattice semiconductor? Let me check. Because a lot of these names, a lot of these symbols have the same names. Um... Yeah, a lot of semiconductor, right? So LSCC had a big move today, really, really big move today. It's coming off the bottom. Look where it stopped, folks, right? It stopped right at the 50-day moving average. Let's see if it reclaims it and gives a second-day uh, second push tomorrow because, again, as we know, if a stock stops at the 50-day and the next day confirms it, there's a high probability that will it will have another day push. So, uh, you know, there's a lot of theories that the market was kind of waiting and calm because of the Fed on uh, Wednesday? Maybe so. Maybe so. The way I look at it, I look at it kind of face value. I just think that the market digests last week's move. Again, when you have a 6% move, you need a little bit of a break, right? You definitely need a little bit of a break. You got to kind of get your sea legs back under you. You have to kind of get your uh, get your, um, uh, get your your focus back. And that's all what happens. So sometimes when you look at a day, you go, oh man, today was so boring. It was so lame. I couldn't get, you know, I couldn't get any value today. 
it's actually a good thing from the bigger picture. And again, at the end of the day, guys, it's not about today. It's about the bigger picture. Guys, God bless. Hopefully we'll have a much more normal, seamless day tomorrow. God's help. I'll see you on the field tomorrow. Take care.